Okay, so um, I'm starting to think that Christine Cavanos is going to follow me through my entire life of watching anime. Now she's trying <laughs> to become one of my favorite girls. She voices, what is her name? Erica. <laughs> in this she was mako in kill a kill she was madoka and really photo madoka magic gun she's almost every anime that i've watched as a part of my rethink is done and i'm like i love her she's becoming one of my quickly becoming one of my Can't favorite actors. <laughs> and i'm fine with it and mike was wondering why uh iris sounded familiar because he's jeremy lee who's been in a ton of stuff as well yep yeah so um I know you did a synopsis for the entire series last time. I don't know if we've gotten individual ones here, but uh, so apparently I still don't know what her age is, but I guess we now know that she uh, has been with the major for four years. Yep. Yes. That's about all we know right now. And then we, it was still, a, we still, we so still like, really the know. Twin her brother's deal. like, here you go. Here is a girl. You don't you were too well. Yeah, as a weapon only. And <laughs> any any time in the nuts area. Any any time in in fiction when a character says, "Don't get attached," guess what's going to happen? They're going to get yeah. attached. <laughs> Yeah, is is it is it raining outside? I think maybe a character is gonna die. Yeah, like how are we? <laughs> like. Do you know the real here? Sorry, had a mere ponytail. <laughs> you're not. <wrong. laughs> you're 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 not wrong. Yeah, we find out that she's a gift from her uh, gift from his brother. Um, and that the the family that he is from is a very rich family that he is not a normal member in. We find out later that even though they had a ton of money, that he was actually a guy that had a really good heart. Mm -hmm. Or he wasn't really associated with that type of, you know, whatever the family was doing per se. Yeah. Or it sounds like both of those brothers weren't because, like, I don't know if they were in the army, but they sound like they're, they're all rich. But the one had a ponytail. Oh, he did say the sad dad had a sabers. They probably all were a part of the army. And the brother was just an outcast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I didn't think we were going to get the amount of comedy that we got in this episode with Violet. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's all, it's the best kind of comedy too. Cause it's all, it's all character based, but it's also like, it, it's like the Drax kind of sense of humor where yes. she's so socially inept that she takes everything like, literally. Like a little. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> to, to the point that it starts to ruin the reputation of their startup business. Yes, and <laughs> she like she types way too loud. I was like, someone's got to comment on that, and then it commented on it. One of the many great details of a show is, or any form of fiction, is when they say exactly what you're thinking. Um, that <laughs> happened a lot watching the this past season of Stranger Things, I would like predict a line in my head and then they say it like two seconds later. Exactly. And the, we like, uh, we're starting to get the more in and outs of just like how out of it Violet is. Yeah. You would sit there next yep. to Erica and Iris being like, you made an error in that sentence. That <laughs> if you, if you paid two blank and blanks, it would take you 120 years to are you going to live for that long not is that a good thing are you going to live for that long is your question i'm like are you for real <laughs> it's like what the crap but Talk about having no bedside manner no or this is the weird part where it's like what does she understand about humanity that she's honestly right, yeah. asking the that's why where she has to ask about, <laughs> are you going to live for 120 years? <laughs> That's the part where I'm like, man, what is your backstory? Because this is getting more complicated, and I get that's the part of the hook of the show. But I'm like, it's it's vacillating wildly between you had a weird childhood, and I don't know if you're human fully. <laughs> at, at, at this point, I'm starting to question... <laughs> I mean, I still, I still think like, at at worst, she's just 
she was just born right into the fires of war and that's why she is the way she is but if there's something more like if she's not necessarily um corporeal then it'll certainly make things fascinating but at the same time it'll also kind of strengthen what i'm gathering now is the theme of the show which is really all about the human condition yeah they're taught that like not knowing how to structure words properly and talking about all the contradictions and like faults that human has humans have where they have to have something to help them do it correctly and yeah it's um man it it's breaking down that just how kind of screwed up humans are in a very innocent way which yeah. I thought this was going to be a character study just about Violet, but it's a character study about human behavior through Violet. Because, like, again, I am I knew nothing with a capital nothing <laughs> before I walked into this. I just knew that it wasn't it was going to be something very different from what we've covered quite recently, and pretty much everything that I've watched recently. Because the last two animes that I watched outside of this were Black Lagoon and No Game No Life, so those are way over there. <laughs> compared to what this is but it's like the episodes are so i don't want to say slice of life they're so like they have very little development in them they're just tiptoeing along towards the end point ever so slowly but it's all engaging enough to where you don't care it's it's borderlining on sitcom like speed toward an end point but without the bad writing <laughs> basically what we have what we have in this show is um it's it's on, on wikipedia they call it a fantasy and maybe the fantasy element is going to be explored later but right now this is really just a period drama with a little bit of fantasy elements. Yeah, the, the little bit of like, obviously with the mechanical arms and <laughs> I gotta remember what uh, what war, I wanna say it's World War II. Was it World War II? That uh, JoJo part two takes place during because you've got this German Stroheim <laughs> that is like, I want to say 50% like robotic Android. <laughs> there is a like, just waste a little bit of time here before we, we saw gets back. There was there's this one episode where it's this the red diamond of Asia. I, I want to say it's of Asia is the main like MacGuffin that the pillar men are trying to get from the uh, Joe star team. And, uh, <laughs> And he needs a mask, and he needs this thing to put it in the mask. And there's this great scene in the English dub where Stroheim is so overdoing it. Where he's just like, ah, I did not see that he was wearing the mask. I couldn't have seen he had it with him. No. And me and my buddy Crow reference it all the time whenever there's a plot point of someone hiding some weapon on him or something. Oh, it's so, but like, that's just JoJo period where it's just over the top for the sake of, because like, they're, like part one, they're teenagers that are like 50 year old bodybuilders, just these giant men. <laughs> See that part three too. Joe Chicken Jotaro is like the size of a tank, and he's supposed to be like fifteen. <laughs> okay, that's funny. <laughs> it's, it's just these giant pillars of manliness. <laughs> There's a great. Oh man. I can't think of what the guy who writes it does, but uh, there's this great joke by Wooly and Pat from Two Best Friends where they're like <laughs> That he was discovering his sexuality throughout 30 years of writing with because all of the jokes starts like <laughs> so that was Salvac. We actually had a small talk about um JoJo's before this happened <laughs> while you were away. The audacity. <laughs> I know, I know. The audacity. 
I'm sorry. I was I was telling them about what what uh what war is taking place in part two? Is that World War Two? I, I know it's World War Two because they were keep talking about German engineering. German engineering. Yeah, they were so keep on about... flexing the German engineering. Yeah, because I was telling I was telling I will them about double how... check. I think it was World War Two. I was yeah. telling them about how overdone the English dub of Stroheim is. It's great. But uh anyway. I watched this yeah, I watched this sub. It was it's it's something. <laughs> Stroheim when he finds out he has the when when uh cars puts the mask on is one of the best overdone voice acting on the planet. But uh anyway, so um I wanted to get into the main points of like the episode because again, this is a but I was telling with Michael, your way is that they have the weirdest pacing. Like I'm enjoying watching all of the episodes that we've seen so far. It's great. But like there is yeah. two seconds of plot in like each episode. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like planting to see you little by little what yeah. the actual plot is. Yeah. yeah they, they, like... they, they haven't even watered the uh, the garden yet. They're just planting the seeds. Yeah, I just feel like they focus it, in most animes, they focus more on the world building first, and then they, based on that, they go into, like, what the plot is. So we're it, just kind of getting more of the world building. I know, I just thought we were going to get more by this point, considering it's only, before the movies came out, was 12 episodes. <laughs> but we're getting there slowly. So, what Mike said, um, oh no, we're actually going to get to that at the end. The thing that I want to talk about is, like, I always kind of, well, I kind of wondered where the term auto memory doll come from. It still makes no damn sense. <laughs> um, but they talk about it in the episode. It, where, go ahead. I just feel like that's just, instead of just calling like them like a typewriter, that's just the name of it, like auto. I know, but like, did I hear it wrong? Oh, or did they, did they start calling the typewriter an auto memory doll? And then they called the other things that as well. That's um, what I thought I heard. That's actually that sounds pretty accurate. Um, yeah. The um, they they just they described it as like the the, the typewriter was the mach machine um, called the um, automated memory doll um, that you know the doctor made for his wife, mm -hmm. and then I guess. I guess these uh, steno stenographers kind of adopted that term Her. for their for their business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that's what the peop the typewriter people are called that instead of yeah. the actual machine. Yeah, and I thought that was interesting. Is like the blind novelist is the one to write. I'm like, huh? And you get the typewriter in there. I'm like, that does that makes sense of what you get the original use out of. Um. So, <laughs> man, I held back. I almost teared up in this episode because. Two or three times in this episode, they mentioned that the owner is not going to get a salary this month. Oh. And when they mention that the brooch is on the black market and then they buy it and yeah. they use his salary to buy her the brooch, I was like, Is it Ooh. too early to sip it? <laughs> if I knew what her age was, I would be a little more. That's my only hesitation. <laughs> just oh, like, you'll be surprised what people can ship here. Oh, oh, oh I know. You'll be surprised. I mean, I could go down that rabbit hole right now, oh, but let's not get into oh, that. So. Oh, trust me. Oh, trust me. Do do we need to? Do we even need to bring up the Ruby ship chart? Because <laughs> that thing's <laughs> ridiculous. I don't know if we've ever told you about the Ruby ship chart, Mike. Yeah, we when I, 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 I got kill, we bought it on multiple times. Okay, I was all right. Bringing it up in general sense, I can go to any fandom. It's like, yeah, these are the crabs chasing this fandom. Ah, uh, uh, but yeah, man, I was not expecting that, and that's a really innocent thing. Yeah, but ah, uh, just that, like like that, um, Frozen. Gift of Christos going, I'm gonna tell him, and else and Anna's like, Don't you dare. I feel like that's literally what's just happening right now with Toys Violet. It, it is. I was like, I'm gonna tell her. You yeah. Yeah. It's like she's out and she has that moment out in the rain with Erica about how either of them don't believe they're good for that job, but she's still gonna try and defend 
her even though she's terrible at it and she thinks yeah. that Violet could be better than her and they had that really sweet moment where you, you find out about the auto memory doll uh, at the which oh yeah it does, it does make sense because it had the person typing it out I actually had the doll on the typewriter I forgot yeah. about that that does make more sense but uh you just like her intentions behind it I love what they're doing with those end credits where they have Same. a personal chat with each character yeah. oh oh it's so good but uh yeah we and they still are not going to outright say it we have them say that oh by the way he's not coming back are you really not even to the person that's not violet gonna say that he's dead they're they're, they're gonna drag this out for for a bit aren't they yeah, no like because like they're not like flat out saying it like is there a small possibility that like he is alive? I, there is a because if he is dead, why you why stress it out the whole episode? I I don't I know, don't. and and the thing that uh, Mike knows about me that I hate hate more than anything on the planet in a movie, an anime, a cartoon is when they don't say thing. Th things that people would talk about simply because the audience is watching them. Yeah, like because yeah. then you would it understand. It could be like a plot. halfway point where like it comes out. And yeah, it just kind of goes towards a girl route. Like you just see her mostly damaged and how she overcomes it. Yeah, it, there's two. There's two ways that I'm thinking about this. Either he's dead. And what's going to happen is there's going to be some point where Violet asks too much and he finally screams at him that he's dead and he's not coming back. Yeah, I feel or, like there's going to be a like breaking point. With yeah, that. or he's borderline a vegetable and is barely living and they don't want to show him to her. Either either one of those are a very possible, uh, genuine yeah. possibility. Yeah, because it's like you don't, like they openly show that she's recovered and she doesn't see him die. She sees him in a near death state. Yeah, like they were both like they were like if Violet made it and they were both had the same or similar type of injuries, probably he. Cause she she almost looked worse shaped than he did. She did. Cause she had like her she had her arms blown off. He just looks like he got shot. Well yeah, but like he told her to run away. So what if like she actually did run away, left him and like someone, like whatever like whatever type of war this was, like the enemy took him Got captive him. type of thing. That's why it's like, yeah, he can't come back. That is true. That could happen too. Yeah. Or or yeah, but he's missing in action and they don't even know if he's dead. Yeah, that yeah. It could be that like he's like you know, war captured. Hmm. But the war but we don't know did they say how long the war ended or they just the, the only time frame that we know is that she was given to him four years ago. Yeah, and then that's all. Like the war says ended. Like she got recovered. Like well, oh, hold on. When she woke up in the hospital, she was there for 120 days. They did say that. Okay, okay. so the war like ended shortly, not too so, long ago. So we not too have... long ago. So it could have ended like within the last month because she was in the hospital. Yeah. During fight, huh? And they were saying know. it's gonna take years to rebuild like the bridge and all that. So it probably yeah. just ended. Like we don't know who actually won, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's different. And they're they're they don't need to reference it because like it's just that obviously it was in war, but yeah, it's got everyone wondering. So they're yeah, it's it's yeah, it's man, this is so weird doing this when I don't know what's going on. Like in Ruby, <laughs> I could do predictions all day because like I've seen five seasons of it or six. Oh, and the, and the random theories we can pull out when we do Ruby. Yeah, and now we're going to have two different Ruby shows to cover. That's not going to get confusing. Um, but yeah, it's uh, very good so far. This yeah, is the most I'm, I'm, I'm liking this quite a bit. Yeah. This is the most different anime I've watched in a long time, and I'm good with that. So, yeah, like this is kind of like ironically well, my alley. So I'm like, yes. <laughs> oh yeah, no, this 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 is like, if if this were just a movie, this would be something that like Cameron and I would have raved about. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's gonna be something. I 
man, I just, I don't know where this is going to go, and that excites me. So, all right, yeah. let's get on out of here. Mike? Okay, you guys can find me on Twitter at CaptainK42. You can check out my quick thoughts on letterbox.com slash CoachK42. And you can find me in all the various Facebook groups just at my name. You can check out Renegade Pop Culture on Facebook and Twitter at Ren Pop Culture. You can also find us on Podchaser and the Banana Meter and on YouTube. You can listen to all of our podcasts on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. And last but not least, everything can be found at renegadepopculture.com. Need an escape? So do we. And what's up? And you can find me at Code All right. And you can find me everywhere at Organoid Zero. All right. We are going to get on out of here. Until next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.